time for the fan favorite segment, the fans on where we give a focus on discussion on matters international football and of course fading out there is Yese Lingard just showcasing his exploits in the kitchen away from football as he has been voted as the player of the month and a goal that he scored has also been unanimously voted for as you know the goal of the month featuring for West Ham right now on loan from United not sure whether he will make a comeback to his team considering the stiff opposition in the team United at 10 of course, just uh, Lingard. Oh, you are not just a Lingard. You are Tyras Wayaki. <laughs> and he is Ken Andrew. That are my panelists. And of course, straight into this. What do you think about Yese? He's been convincing this particular season, helping his team West Ham. Um, yeah. Looks like they're chasing for a top four finish to qualify for Champions League football. Possible? Yeah, yeah possible with uh, Chelsea losing to Arsenal the other day. And uh, the big game, Chelsea versus Leicester next week, will. The one who loses it, I don't think I'd want to be him because they might miss out on the top four. But as for Lingard, uh, Bruno Fernandes in a recent interview said uh, in the past 10 games he's been the best player in the Premier League, you know. He's he been, said so. Yeah, Bruno said so. He's been having returns in all the games. He's been scoring goals and he's a, he's a key player for West Ham. How do you get to know that you are the best? You, you need mm. to hear from people saying about yourself. Nah, nah. No, Bruno said Lingard is the best. Oh, Lingard is the yeah, best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he had been watching him. He said in the past 10 games he had been the best because, as we've all seen, in all the, the past games since he went, went to West Ham, he's been scoring goals, he's been creating, he's been uh, the most influential player, and he's been getting 90 minutes, something which he, he couldn't have gotten at United because the, 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 the competition at United at the moment is, is so, so wide because we are seeing quality players still on the bench at United. This move for Lingard was the best thing for him because he showed he's still a class player. And it's also helped him go back to the England setup. You know, he, he, we, we, I think we will see him in the Euros. Uh, it's a move that has really benefited both parties. And uh, uh, United can get some money off him if he really wants to leave him and if Ole doesn't want him. They can get 30, 40 million off him. Yeah. Just like how we've encouraged local players, besides playing on the pitch, they should also invent something else on the side to do. So that in the event football goes haywire, they have an alternative. You see yes, Lingard now good in the kitchen, yeah. <laughs> showcasing his exploits. And I know it's good, it's good for the growth of any career personality because we've seen how the likes of Rio Ferdinand, Paul Scholes, Michael Owen, Alan Shearer, you know Ian Wright, when they quit football, they're doing punditry on TV and it's 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 getting along very well for them. Actually, what Lingard is Lingard is really sharp. He's really really sharp, and he's made me look at him from a very different perspective right now. Given his celebrity status, I mean, you are not the only celebrity that perhaps surpasses a footballer in the UK is a rock star. Lingard is now uh, he can use build on that status of his celebrity status to s go on and start a cookery show. And these cookery magazines that sell like hot cake in the UK, he can also have a column there or something in future. Uh, uh, retirement time. And because it's, this is not something that would affect him, his contract, he cannot get injured while cooking or writing an article about cooking. He can even start it now and build on that and make lots and lots of money out of it. So yes, you're right to mention the business angle of it it's a very serious perspective and it's become so big on tv there's a kenyan rugby player or is he a former rugby player who's dennis ombachi dennis ombachi yes he's he's, a he's been doing it on twitter yeah and now he's doing it on television on one of I the think tv stations uh, colin sinjera mm, yeah. you see and um you say he's a carpenter and, and he's whatnot. a carpenter you know he makes you know I uh, thought that was a Sego. Fantastic. No, it's uh, Dennis Ombachi, former Even player for the National Sevens team. Sego. You know, fantastic from carpenter. all, you know, wooden <laughs> mm. <laughs> sort of materials and, you mm. know, creating a very fantastic product from the same table, you know, nice chair. And he's also good at cooking. And you see, those are things that attract a very important segment of the business sphere, women. Women invest heavily in such things outdoor furniture interior furniture um cooking and they are a, a very very vi high, vital important segment they've, they've got the money they've got the numbers they are opinionated and their opinions are strong they count for a lot so once you venture into that area especially using your celebrity status 
my friend, you're talking it's, serious it's, money it's, here. It's quite booming. Mm. Now, let's get into the business of, you know, uh, matters international football and in terms of headline. UEFA Champions League football pitting all English Premier League sites, Manchester City and Chelsea, an all English final affair that was supposed to happen in Istanbul, now getting moved to Portugal. Yeah. How, how, how is that panning along for these two teams? Because, you know, Turkey... Uh, and going by the surging numbers of COVID, it's one of the uh, red zones for England. There are yeah. for fans can't travel there to watch, you know, their respective teams lock horns against each other. Yeah. Can it in any way uh, determine the outcome of the game? Nah. Getting moved from Turkey to Portugal? Nah, I, I don't think so because uh, both teams will still be at a neutral venue, you know. The fans will still have to travel, but... Uh, you know, for COVID uh, safety, it was it was very crucial for that for the players and the fans and the journalists to be in a place where they they won't be really exposed to COVID. Uh, but it's a huge loss for Turkey. For, for now, the second time they've lost the Champions League final again. In terms and, uh, of revenue collection, yeah, 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 it's like Kenya losing the WLC. Uh, in you know, it will hurt the country so bad and. Uh, we can't be certain be, it will be pushed to them again next year because we are not sure how the situation will go. Yeah, lockdowns are getting called and everything. Yeah, so it is sad for Turkey, but I'll still expect a quality final in Portugal. We saw uh, last season they also in Portugal the the final eight teams, and uh, we saw a lot of quality Bayern and PSG. And that's what you'll get. Manchester City versus Chelsea will will never be a dull affair. You know, we saw in their recent game it had. It was explosive with I didn't VAR. I did that game though. Yeah, it was explosive with VAR madness and uh, <laughs> goalkeepers and, and everything. It was just a great game and I think we'll still get a quality game regardless of the venue. That game, of course, he was talking about played last weekend on Saturday evening ending 2-1 uh, in Chelsea. favor of Chelsea. Contrary to expectation, does it in any way, you know, set the bar in terms of who do we expect to win the Champions League? And remember just before that, they had met in the FA Cup semi-final. And that was about two or three weeks before last Saturday's game. And obviously, Chelsea won one nil. Still, that slim goal of... So Chelsea has uh, dominated uh, against their That goal rivals. difference, yes. It's very difficult to beat a team twice in quick succession. And then now, here they are, clashing in the UEFA Champions League final. It's another massive encounter a battle of managers. Um, Guardiola saying from last Saturday's beating that he has now worked out the formula to beat Chelsea. Chelsea, on the other hand, are, are looking very, very serious. Very, very serious. I mean, you write off Chelsea at your own peril. I got a text message from my brother last Saturday. He said, um, what do you think of today's game? Manchester City, Chelsea. I told him... I think it will be a draw. I don't see City losing. And I don't see... Ch anyway, and then I asked him, you, and what's your take? And he goes like, Chelsea. And I'm so putting it on the family, yeah? So I, I sit Lisbon. down, and then in the, the very last minute, boom, Chelsea win. Yeah. And, and my prediction is, I mean, I lose. So, I mean, I'm not joking with Tukel. I'm not joking with Chelsea anymore. These guys mean the business. Mouthwatering clash expected to happen in Portugal. Of course, in UEFA Champions League football, Chelsea up against Manchester City. Just counting down a few weeks from now as we speak, right? Yeah, one, one and a half weeks uh, and a half on half the weeks. 29th of May. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a great affair. But Maxwell, mm. that game should have been played in England. This gentleman is right. But the game should have been played in England. No, 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 no. no, 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 I think, no, no. Or, or, or is that not what you said? No, 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 it's not. I think uh, regardless of the venue. In England, it will water down the quality of the game because yeah, 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 yeah. it's sort of, you know... We, we already uh, saw it at Wembley yeah, three weeks ago. Because the yeah. issue of fans. Mm. Remember, 10,000 fans had been allocated tickets, is it? Yeah. 5,000 for each team. Yeah. Now... The logistics of them traveling to Portugal, is it Portugal that has now been given the, the rights to host the, the yeah. final? The train, uh, the, sorry, the train, the air tickets to Portugal have yeah. been hiked. Yeah. They've been hiked. Now, I mean, football, you're trying to make football more accessible, yeah. as for, it's respective for how, how few the fan base might be. But even in this new normal times that we're living in, you need to have fans, and it would have been cheaper for them to go to Wembley 
and watch the game from there. You have to factor that in. And then now, even if the, the tickets had not been hiked, there is the issue of them traveling there and you're trying to avoid air travel in these times of COVID. What they bring back home, uh, you just never know. We're in such unpredictable times, really in the interests of football. This game should have been played. But they are respected. This Maybe whatever the Champions League football <laughs> did is in the best interest of you know, yeah, overall yeah. football. Anyway, away from matters that, because if we start discussing about the technical aspect of the game, Tyras might take one hour <laughs> <laughs> just giving and sharing his insights on the same. Let's talk about Edison yeah. Cavani and yeah. how heroic he's been for Man United scoring and banging in goals day in, day out. And that yeah. has earned him contract extension at the mm. Old Trafford until 2020? 2022 Two. with an option to extend to 23. Yeah. With, a, with an option to extend. How yeah. is that going along for Uruguayan yeah. International? Yeah, I think most of the United fan base love Edinson Cavani because he's a hard worker uh, aside from being a goal scorer. We see him chasing back and also th the type of goals he scored are you know, United have lacked a striker with that kind of movement and that kind of ability in the box for a very long time. I know Anthony Martial is there, but you know, he, he blows hot and cold. You know, not uh, consistent. Yeah, not consistent. And like, if you want a top striker, you look at Lewandowski, Aguero, those guys on form, they, they'll game after game, same level of consistency, you know. And having Cavani there now with uh, Greenwood still being mentored by him, uh, it is great for Man United and that will help them next season if they really want to charge for the title. Yeah, Definitely, yes. Yourself, your thoughts on Cavani extension at United and considering how United has been having problems at getting number seven and now it looks like he's settling in very well. Uh, first and foremost, let me wish good luck to the two lady teams meeting tomorrow in the UEFA Champions League women's version, that's FC Barcelona and Chelsea FC. Chelsea mm -hmm. are the first side in Europe to have both women team, uh, both men and women teams in the finals of the UEFA Champions League. So that's kudos to them. And Mr. Tukel is doing a good job as the overall manager of the club. Uh, Cavani, brilliant idea to have him on board because He's the perfect tonic for you, Manchester United. He has gelled into the team pretty much like Fernandes did very quickly, and that's what Manchester United, uh, United needed urgently. He is scoring goals. He's attacking consistently. He's creating chances, and he's a perfect role model for the young crop of players who are coming through. For, I wasn't surprised when that contract was extended. It was the right thing to do. The fans were pushing for it. They've got it. It's a brilliant thing. And I think next season will be a wonderful season to look forward to. Although I'm, I think Chelsea might win it next season. <laughs> or am I jumping the gun? You're jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, still talking about international football headlines. Antonio Valencia, he played very well during his heydays at United as a right back and at some point now, you know, yeah. uh, being placed on the flank far yeah. front at number seven. And now he announced retirement from football officially. Mm. I don't know, what do you remember about the Ecuadorian? I just remember him being captain in, in the last season because I feel as a right back is when he's had his, his most profitable stint at Manchester United. When he came and uh, he had the seven jersey, you know, he sort of fell in that seven that cast. That jersey has been... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was hard for him to perform, but he switched the jersey. You know, even when he was playing as a winger, you, you can remember him just hitting the ball forward and chasing it, you know. He was more of like an... Adama Traore type, but uh, <laughs> with less muscle, you know, and he hits the ball so hard. He, has, he had been a great servant for Man United, you know. The, 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 those players that uh, Sir Alex kind of bought at the, almost the end of his tenure, guys like De Gea, Young, Valencia, they, they served the club really well at Man United, and Valencia went back home to Ecuador and still had a, an okay um, career, and it's, he's now retired, yeah, after a great season. You know, after you retire after playing for Manchester United, you'll always be considered a legend. <laughs> and <laughs> quite unfortunate that, you know, he mm. didn't win any silverware with his national team mm. equal as far as international elite yeah. uh, football uh, you know competition prizes are concerned because yeah. just like 
uh, this player who plays for Bayern Munich and he comes mm. from yeah. this small unknown country. Uh, Robert Lewandowski yeah, is just a good example. Yeah, he yeah. plays for Poland as his mm. national team, but mm. it's it's very hard to win, you know, yeah. a World yeah. Cup, uh, you know, these well, national Euros. team titles, mm. Euros, with a team like Poland, because yeah. maybe you are the standout player yeah, yeah, alone yeah. coming from Always that team. And I think that was... It can be said of Valencia with yeah. Ecuador. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You can see him on your screens. They are giving you a thumbs up. He's given his best to soccer. He's been a wonderful servant. Uh, he's done well at United when he was there. You remember I told you one of the guys I used to watch soccer with used to refer to... A Manchester United fan, by the way, used to refer to him as a picky picky because he was like a moped on, on that pitch, kicking the ball as... Ken has just said, and then chasing hard after it. He was brilliant. Not the most brilliant in terms of skill, but brilliant in terms of determination. That commitment. Yeah. He was one guy you could depend on. And you want players that you can depend on. Yeah. Uh, as for his country not being able to win any silverware, that, that is expected. Uh, yes, we have seen on the odd occasion underdogs like Greece win the Euro Cup, which they did in 2004. But that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's not something that happens every other time. So you couldn't have expected the guy to do so well with his country. Even Lewandowski, you don't expect him to win the Euros with, with Poland. In fact, for them qualifying for the Euros, just essentially that's an added incentive. Even for the World Cup, that's an even bigger incentive. And if they go beyond the group stages, then they become one of the teams that will be remembered in that tournament, not for winning, but for going beyond that group stage uh, against the bookmakers' uh, predictions. So uh, th there won't be anything hard on him for that. But for him playing for his country, that's a good thing. Uh, it brought Ecuador on the map. There's people who've never heard of Ecuador. But because of him, they were able to hear of Ecuador and know that Ecuador plays football. So that's a wonderful thing. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't hold anything against him for that. There have been bigger names who've played for bigger national teams, but they didn't win any silverware to talk of. So really, um, let's remember him more for his service to Manchester United. Just yeah. a few minutes remaining before we wind up the show. Before we do, big game coming up this particular mm -hmm. evening, FA final, pulsating class Chelsea up against Leicester. Of course, for mm -hmm. obvious reasons, I'm rooting <laughs> behind yes. Leicester because in the event Chelsea wins this, it will give them much needed motivation and morale, even mm -hmm. to lift uh, the Champions League title, and you know Chelsea winning a double this season, man, it's it's, sad it's for ridiculous, me. especially for it's someone sad. like myself who got some soft spot for United. Though obviously my team is Nottingham Forest featuring <laughs> <laughs> in the Championship. <laughs> so Ken, yeah, you are where are you placing your bet? Chelsea, because I feel like they've really improved defensively, you know, and also. Th this two, you know, they, they play each other in a, two times in a matter of five days. You know? Yes. And both of them are really crucial. One is a final and one is whoever loses, can Liverpool can overtake them to get into the top four, Liverpool or West Ham. So these are two tough games for both teams and uh, no one is going to go easy on, on each other. There are two finals for two teams and Chelsea are, they, they have the most entertaining end to the season in the Premier League because they have the Champions League final, they still have a battle for the top four and now they have an FA Cup final. But um, I just see Chelsea taking home the trophy. Do you think there is a likelihood Thomas Tuchel uh, might fill a fringe squad against Leicester in order to keep most of his influential players strong and fit ahead of Champions League final? Or no he chance. doesn't want to take a risk. No chance. Um, how often do you... Uh, well, they got to the FA Cup final last season, but how often do you get a second chance in life? They lost the last FA Cup final. Now they've got a second chance to streamline things. They were a bit inexperienced last time. Now they're a bit more experienced. Uh, I think Tukel won't leave anything to chance. They're going out full throttle for it. And... I actually fancy their chances of winning it, just like Ken here. Uh, the reason why I do so is because Chelsea at the moment are playing the game of their life. 
they are really, really, really playing. They are playing like you cannot believe. Technically, they are so strong. They are the best team in England, technically, right now. And one of the best in Europe. That's why they're in the final of the UEFA Champions League. And that's why they are perhaps even favourites to win the UEFA Champions League. And obviously, apart from technically, up front, they don't have an obvious natural number nine like they did with Didier Drogba. But men, they're scoring in those goals. So for me right now, it's got to be Chelsea. One thing Leicester have failed to do consistently this season is work on their weakness of coming in strong like Manchester United in the second half as opposed to playing the full 90 minutes and trying to win a game in the first half. Chelsea will capitalise on that. Make no mistake about it. Chelsea play 90 minutes. They'll play the first half, they'll play the second half like they didn't even play in the first half. I think Chelsea have a much higher chance of winning this one. But if Leicester polish up and play in the first half like they can, and remember they've got a fantastic striker right now in Kalechi Ihenacho, and Jamie Vardy is consistent through the years, then they can put on a show. But I had one of the fans on the streets on my way here saying um, it will go all the way to penalties. I'm not sure about that, but I think Chelsea will win when the final whistle is blown. Chelsea up against Leicester happening this particular evening at 7.30 yep. uh, p.m. East African time live and exclusive on our mother station KBC channel 1. Hashtag FA final equal KBC. Keep tweeting and keep you know sending in your predictions. But also remember about our question when we started the program, who are the current holders of English Premier League? Of course the response is obvious. Liverpool are the current champions of English Premier League because Manchester City as we speak right now, yes, they have been... Uh, uh, formally, you know, uh, uh, not necessarily title getting handed to them, but they have been declared the champions after, you know, that loss of United against Leicester. But the title has not been handed to them officially and the league is not yet formally concluded. So the current league holders are Liverpool. And going by the responses on my timeline, of course, <laughs> plenty of responses coming in through this man called Joseph Kimayo Kogo. Liverpool are the current champions of EPL 19 stroke 20. They won the season by having 99 points. They are yet to hand over to the winners of 2020 21 champions watching live from Kitale. He even gave his phone number, ending with 217. Think that is our winner. Quite a conclusive response, Ken. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, City don't have the trophy yet, but I think for, for a United fan. That's not a question for, <laughs> for anyone to answer. Like whoever just answered. Oh, because United Liverpool rivalry. And That's sit. why you guys played a weak side against Leicester, mm. so that you can deliberately lose in order to, <laughs> you know, quash mm. Liverpool chances of finishing in top four to qualify for Champions League football next season. Mm. I think if that was if that was what Oli did, I think that's. That's understandable. That was in order. Yeah, but United, they don't really have anything to play for in the league. But Champions Liverpool league responded in style, beating United. 4-2. Yeah. In a game that, that United a, looked so clumsy. That was a yep. bit of a shocker. But um, right. United was it really fans, a shocker? Yeah, it yes. was. Because Liverpool are not at their strength, full strength. They are at their weakest, really. And they've done quite well. They are still contesting for a top four finish. But the, they're not the Liverpool of ye last year. A uh, bit of a shocker, but United fans are saying now they value Maguire because they can feel his absence. When he was on, they didn't quite value him. I don't know, we have a United fan here. He can tell us. Are you a United fan? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. I, I don't think it's just about... They, they were just sloppy in that game. You know? So it's not Maguire. Ma it's, it's not, not Maguire. attributed to absence yeah. of any player. <laughs> United, it was <laughs> not their day against their players, Liverpool that yeah. day. Yeah. Of course, that comes to the end of the program of Saturday today mm. being when? Today is 15th, 15th of yep. May. And FA of course, we're here next day. Saturday, same time, same place, keeping it touchline and of course keeping it sporty. Talking matters, headlines, both on Kenyan scene and even on international front. Remember the FA final live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 from 7.30 East African time this particular evening. Hashtag 
FA final Iko KBC. You know, special thanks to the team uh, in the technical, you know, gallery and even our camera lady for making sure that the program is a success. Without them, this wouldn't have happened. And of course, let's continue observing containment measures put in place by the government of Kenya in order to combat COVID-19 pandemic. For those of us who are passionate about football, about rugby, Solidarity Cup happening in South Africa, Kenya Sevens in participation, of course, alongside Uganda, uh, rugby cranes from Uganda, Zimbabwe, and the host South Africa, and even KPL action is also underway. Four matches on card this particular afternoon as we speak right now. Tasker up against KCB, still scoreless from Ruaraka ground. So we shall be keeping an eye on those developments and see how they pan out. Thank you for tuning in. Stay blessed. Keep it safe. And have a nice weekend. Containment measures on. Face mask.